Hello and welcome to Just Draw Just Paint part three. Today we are going to be looking at a bunch of mech designs and so you can see I'm starting to get all that rust out of myself by just drawing and painting some thumbnails. This is a great way to start. We've chatted about this in the previous video, the idea of just taking the pressure off, right? And starting with some really simple silhouettes some basic ideas on a page that allows us to come up with some kind of starting point for our design work. And so you'll see here, I'm going quite generic with the idea of different types of animals into um, you know a mech and I do this kind of stuff all the time at my school because this is one of the assignments we have in module two of the fundamentals program is to understand this process that I'm doing right here and it's a really interesting one because it forces you straight into the heart of design like there's no way by drawing these fantastical robots that you can just draw what you know like you can't just use one piece of reference for example like a gorilla and just draw it it will never just work that way you can tweak it but your ability to have a strong visual library or a sense of what works with design principles does come into play here right designing is one of those incredibly complex subject matters that i wish i could do an entire series on because there are so many of them you know, I'm sure you've all heard of the golden ratio, you've heard of a uh, good overlap, you've heard of the one, two, three rule. All of these things are useful. They're like little tools in our belt that we can take out and start to implement as we're working. Like even here where I'm drawing, like I'm implementing design ideas and theories that are subconscious at this point almost. I am thinking about them, but they're almost subconscious. So here, you know, I just got my four designs. I'll just label them, always number your work. And I'm gonna take these and I'm actually going to apply cutting them up and pasting them all over each other like a collage to come up with some unique designs like these ones. So this is the beauty of digital art, right? Is we get to mishmash until we arrive at a series like these three here, where I'm actually quite happy with them. I actually think they're pretty cool, nice shapes. So right now, first thing I need to do is jump in and fix some of the uh, perspective issues that is happening with my thumbnails. I've dropped a grid behind. I'm now going to correct those thumbnail, uh, those um, perspective issues. I'm gonna fix up the design, make it a bit more appealing. Uh, add a little bit more just design principles right like what should be big what should be small how big how flat what should overlap what you know I'm thinking of all of those things as I'm doing this and what I really really love about keeping the thumbnail process loose is you can actually see on the silhouette there's some brush marks right and those brush marks actually inspire me to think of form so sometimes I don't like to have just pure black or pure one color um, silhouettes, I like to just leave it loose because that looseness within it, I can start to see certain shapes and that actually informs my design decisions. And so I like the organic process. I like happy mistakes and happy accidents when I'm working this way, even with characters, I'll do this. I'll just like scribble out a bunch of things. And if I see something, I'll try run with it for a while and see how it holds up. So everything you're seeing here is kind of like a sped up version of what it's like to know what you're doing from having done tons of these, right? Like I said, I, I've i done so many of these in my school because it's one of the assignments we do that it's become second nature, right? I know exactly where things should go. I know what kind of shape language I'm using. I know where the overlaps are. I know what the perspective should be doing based on the theory of is it vertical, is it not vertical? All the fundamentals, right, that are taught to my students, I am applying here at this stage instinctively because I've I've not only learned them so deeply because I teach it, but because it just, I know it'll be wrong if I don't do those things, right? So it's almost, it's a second nature, right? At this point, like the fundamentals, everybody thinks, oh, the fundamentals is something that you have to force into your work every single time. Not true, right? Once you know something, it's like riding a bike. You stop thinking about pedaling. You stop thinking about, you know, what foot goes in front of what other foot when you're walking. You know, when you first start to walk, like I have a, a, a almost two year old son now, he's like stumbling all over the place, you know, half the time and he just falls out of nowhere and starts crying. And that's because he hasn't figured out like, yes, you put one foot in front of the other, but if you go too fast, you know, something happens. Or if you not looking where you put your foot and you step on something, something happens, right? So that is kind of like a little analogy for what fundamentals are in art. It's our ability to have a deeper, almost scientific understanding of why we do certain things and how those things impact the quality of the work that we put out. So there is some pretty wacky um, ideas happening with this particular, um, I'm going to call it a character creature design here, a uh, mech creature design, a little bit of a hybrid. Uh, there's something weird and wacky happening, which is I thought, wouldn't it be cool if the back leg rotated along a large, uh, almost hollow axle, 
right? I, I don't think I've seen that before, right? And like, I love the mechanism of like a slide leg that kind of rotates and move around. And that kind of weird and wacky stuff kind of just came out of the drawing, right? I just drew in that area and I was like, ooh, that's kind of cool. Let's run with it and see where it takes us. And that to me is one of the most beautiful things about being a designer versus say, for example, being someone who's just rendering realistic stuff all day perfectly is you get to explore stuff that doesn't exist and you get to say, well, what if, right? And then you have to go and answer that what if as best as you can so that you end up with something that everybody can buy into. And sometimes when we do that, we end up with really interesting design ideas and choices that people haven't seen before. And if you're in this kind of business as a professional and you start doing that frequently, people see the value in your contribution towards projects. And they go, hey, we're not thinking outside the box enough. Let's bring in another artist who can think outside the box. And sometimes, you know, even when you were working on big projects like movies or big video games, you know, we'll bring in additional artists from outside the studio to do that kind of stuff, right? To just shake it up a bit and see what happens. It's almost like smashing a pinata with a different type of bat, you know, and seeing what falls out. Uh, so it's, it's always good to kind of offer a little bit of wackiness sometimes, a little bit of interesting different thinking type stuff because if if you're presenting this to an art director or director of a, of a show or something and they they never expected to see that kind of thing and then you present it to them suddenly they may go you know what this isn't what i was thinking but perhaps it's exactly what the show needs or perhaps exactly what the video game needs we should actually be thinking in the direction that you're thinking right and that's one of the most rewarding things about being a designer is when your design work sort of just pushes the idea a little further than everybody else was expecting and then it lands and everybody goes actually that's maybe the right direction maybe we should take it in that new direction so as you can see there's a quite a if you by the way if you guys are not subscribed to the channel and this is the first time you're coming here you may see me drawing all over the place like i'm not drawing the face first i'm not drawing the chest first or anything i'm just jumping around because right now you know in this series we're not too worried about like the perfect approach or anything like that it's more like well where do you want to start? Where do you want to draw? What are you having fun drawing? Like I'm having fun with the back here. You know, I was having fun with the shoulder just now. I was having fun with the back leg before that. Like I'm just having fun. So I can just jump around and sort of interpret form. You know, like I'm looking at this right now. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm busy drawing out a form here and I'm kind of like, ooh, okay, maybe this can be like a second kind of shoulder, you know, the one that attaches to the body. So I'm thinking like this is some kind of pectoral muscle as if it was if it was like an organic character but it's actually looking more like a shoulder blade right like some kind of shoulder so it's a shoulder that connects to the upper arm and the upper arm has another shoulder on top of it so this kind of stacking and these kind of ideas just purely come out of me needing to fill the space but also ask myself hey what could be there right like look at look what i'm doing right now right i'm trying to figure out like can i get a form to come out of the chest here and ultimately i decide against this because i don't think it's going to work with the design and what i'm trying to do and one of the things that is really cool with this process is that once you start drawing, you can use different layers and different colors to figure stuff out. So now I'm like, okay, cool. I'm done with some of the body. I'm happy with what I've done. Let me explore the head area and the neck in a different color because I'm going to have the neck overlap the back leg on the front, right? The, the front right leg. So I want to make sure that I'm not confusing myself by drawing the same color line over the same color line. I want to maintain anything that I've put there and not over commit all the time. But here I'll just draw in with a second color. And at the end, we'll just take that color and we'll lock the pixels and we'll fill it with the same color that we've been working with and everything will be unified. Just fleshing out the back of the neck here. So all of these forms, it's just like, you can see I'm just moving stuff around and looking for a way to show as much three dimension as possible. That's one of the secrets to great drawing is is your drawing three-dimensional it sounds kind of weird because as 2d artists we're always fighting the problem that is a flat page how do you get something on a flat piece of paper to look like it's three-dimensional you know we don't have necessarily lighting with line art unless you shade something and so we can only use a certain amount of techniques right so off the top of my head those techniques are good perspective good overlap of shape and form line weight in other words anything closer to us has slightly thicker line weight or anything that overlaps anything else has slightly thicker line weight and we've got 
other techniques, like maybe we could fit in some uh, winding forms, you know, stuff like that. We could uh, show the inside of something, right? That's a great way we can do like a, an extrusion, either in or a bevel on a surface that kind of shows the depth of something. We can shade in specific areas in black to delineate depth. So all of these things are being applied in real time in front of you right now, right? These are techniques and ideas of just getting a drawing, which would otherwise be flat, like the silhouette, into something that is three-dimensional. And one of the things I like to do is work one drawing up this way. You know, some, you saw maybe with the first of, these, of this particular series that when I was drawing, I used multiple layers for the character, right? And that's because it was a complex concept, right? I was trying to hit every single note in the brief all of those things, the silhouette needed work, you know, like my my particular um, approach was a little bit different. But in this case here, I'm using the very first drawing with just a few other layers to hit every single thing. So I'm not going to clean this up. I'm actually going to use this original drawing and clean as I go. And this is called first generation drawing, and it has a massive amount of appeal. And I kind of learned this technique from a few other people, this idea that you don't draw multiple layers of something, just stick with the one and clean it up as you go. Uh, and one of those areas was actually Walt Disney, right? He believed that every single time we create a first generation drawing, it has the most energy of all our sketches and all our drawing. And if you ever go back and watch the original Jungle Book, I believe it was the last film he ever made, that entire film didn't have much cleanup at all. In fact, they just kept it pretty raw. I think they used maybe pencils and a little bit of ink, but they kept it as close to the original artist's drawing as possible because it had the most energy. And when you watch the film, it is just so breathtaking because everything moves perfectly, right? It's beautifully animated. In fact, I think to this day, it holds up as one of the best animations ever made. It's really, really stunning. Um, so treat yourself, uh, maybe this holiday season, especially if you have kids around, you know, just uh, watch one of the old Disney movies, watch Jungle Book for sure, right? It's really, really good. Um, and really, it, it speaks to the same concept, right? Which is, you know, first generation drawing can be so powerful because we're not just, we're not moving into it too much. And by the way, today, I'm not going to over clean this up because obviously this is just me having fun, but we're going to clean up a tiny bit, right? As we work, we're not going to take this to a hyper polish. We're not going to fix every mistake because if I was presenting this in studio, for example, right, this would be the level at which I could present it and say, look, this is the design. What do you think? What should we change? Should we move something around? You know, like maybe this is a character for a comic book and you're pitching it to people or you're showing some of your friends and be like, what do you think's missing? What, what should I add? What should I leave out? And at that stage, you can go like, okay, cool. Like, let me make some edits on top of that. And maybe you end up with the final at that point. But for me, like, I really love this first generation drawing stuff because it's super no pressure, right? You can just kind of, you know, bash it out, finish it and go, it's done, right? And then just move on with your life and start something else new. And for me, a lot of the time, that's, that's really, really healthy. Like, I don't like to, to linger too long anymore on things. I think it's maybe my old age. Like, I prefer to just get stuff out and just kind of be done with it and move on to the next thing right i prefer to do more than fixate on the one thing right so here uh we're almost done we are just kind of cleaning up a little bit into uh the design obviously we're missing a little bit of the underside of that character which i'll draw in i just need to clean up a few details to make them make sense here so i'm paying a little bit more attention to the perspective on a few of these forms which i missed you may notice by looking at this that a lot of the forms on this particular um creature character mech are rounded and that's on purpose right this is again going in line with design fundamentals which is you know are you repeating shape language right does it look like it's made by the same people who made the other things and that is a really really powerful way to uh, think about design right is does a ferrari the new ferrari that you just designed look like the old ferrari that was designed by the previous people and it has to right it has to look like the same people made it Otherwise, you have like a Porsche on the front and a BMW in the back and nothing is cohesive, right? And that doesn't look very appealing when you're presenting that uh, in the real world, even, you know, you know with cars or, uh, you know, the latest, you know, Apple computer or something. Imagine an Apple computer had like a crappy mouse, right? It wouldn't work. It would just look so out of place. So all of those principles in design, you know, we can thank uh, industrial designers and uh, graphic designers and all other people who have figured this stuff out before us and it's definitely worth learning and looking at that stuff if you're a digital artist because 
it is so powerful, right? Like other fields can 100% inform our art. And so one of the beautiful things for me about being an artist is that we get to look at other fields, study them and learn from them, learn the best ideas from them and bring it back into our work. So I might do dare I say, a couple more of these uh, for the next couple videos. So I hope you guys don't mind me watching uh, watching me do some of these mech drawings. Uh, I do love doing them. They're just so almost brainless for me. Like I enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's not difficult. So it's a really easy thing for me to commit to and make a video out of and kind of share my thoughts with you guys. So if you like this video, please don't forget to uh, like, subscribe if you're not already, uh, maybe to see some more of these. Um, and I'm not sure what direction I should take the commentary for these videos in for you guys. I could talk about the kind of things I am here, which is more artistic and more technical, or I could also go a little bit more philosophical and kind of explain more about maybe the industry or the approach to getting better at art, that kind of stuff. So leave me some comments. Let me know what kind of content you guys are hungry for, the kind of stuff maybe that you're not getting anywhere else. Maybe I can help you with would be pretty fun for me to kind of put in here and, and plan out. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Uh, obviously, I forgot that back foot, so I'm just putting it in here, making sure it's in the right place, doing the right thing, and then I'll. You, you'll notice, by the way, that I cleaned up the silhouette as I was working. That's another part of cleaning up is just going in there and making sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. And one other note is I try not to over clean up my silhouette because I learned from one of the artists back in the day that I was working with and, and learning from that if you over clean up something, it just looks too clean, it's too rendered. And I agree, like I, I kind of like that slightly rough look to something where it almost looks like it's been drafted for a project and then it's you can collect a bunch of them and it just looks like it's it's almost a work in progress. And something about that work in progress, first generation drawing is just, it's so energetic and exciting to look at and appealing. So yeah, maybe I'm a nerd for that kind of stuff. I don't know, uh, but I love it. I love it. Uh, so cleaning up here, adding a bit of line weight, a little bit of... Uh, Sens uh, sensible, you know, design decisions, making things read a little bit more efficiently. Uh, yeah, that's that's my chief goal here. All right, and that's about it. If you guys want to join our free newsletter, you can find it on our website. You just go to the website and wait a couple seconds, it'll pop up. And here I'm just adding a little bit of a shadow underneath the character to just ground it a bit. And that'll be it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll check you with the next one.